Greetings ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the new speed presented to you by the dislike and survivor. Follow, follow the beat, follow the beat from the studio to the street. Info with the flow keeps you sharp and in the know. Sit back, relax, enjoy the news, follow. The Uganda Communication Commission has finally announced that Uganda is now ready for digital migration four months after it was supposed to switch from analog transmission. June 17th was the deadline for all member nations of the International Telecommunication Union to make the transition. The first switch off within the 60 kilometer radius provoked a nationwide backlash and created a fuss from consumers, politicians and television broadcasters. In June this year, UCC was challenging court for its decision to switch Kampala and Entebbe onto digital transmission. But later, the court overturned the interim order that had bad Uganda Communications Commission from migrating the entire nation to digital television. 17 upcountry satellite stations are now ready for duty to implement the digital migration religion outside Kampala City. But they are concerned that the poor people who can't afford decoders will be affected after the digital migration process has been effected. However, the Ugandan government has taken responsibility and waived taxes off the set to boxes to ensure affordability. Uganda and Kenya's digital migrations have undergone similar circumstances, which have been characterized by similar court incidences. However, Tanzania and Rwanda have had smooth digital migration processes. Africa's rail network was constructed by its colonialists and the first network was started in Egypt. Reasons for the project were to stimulate trade and boost the African economies and to assert control over the natural resources in the colonies. In many African cities, trains are no longer in operation. Minivans are now the traditional means of transportation. But there's a new metro train in the city of Addis Ababa, the first of its kind in sub-Saharan Africa. The modern train that runs on electricity has the capacity to bring 60,000 people to the city. Now passengers can board two lines that connect to all suburbs and at less than half a dollar it costs less than taxi cabs. The metro train that runs between 6 a.m. and midnight daily uses energy generated from dams all over the country. The $475 million project is a joint collaboration. It's a China-Ethiopia bilateral cooperation. The initial stage of operation is overseen by the Chinese as an exchange of skills and culture between the two countries. The rail will connect with the national train system upon completion and by 2025 it's expected to have at least 5,000 kilometers across the nation. The metro service system has transformed the way people get to work in the city and the long-term goal is to connect it to Sudan, Gabon and Djibouti. Rap music has become the ultimate means of expression. Our reporter Jess Centino is here with a full report. Angola has become one of the fast growing economies, rich in petroleum, uranium, diamonds and gold. As the demand increases, so does the lack of democracy, forcing Angolan rapper, the silver barrier, to stand up for his nation. He had enough and he spoke out against this exploitation. His lyrics led to his incarceration. Among us 14 other activists who are now in jail, accused without trial and without bail. Three weeks into their arrest, with two weeks of hunger strike they did protest. A day in court was their only request. All were charged with rebellion against the president. All they asked was equal distribution of wealth from the richest president of Africa with a net worth 20 billion dollars. Freedom of speech has been impeached. Fear and silence only allow such acts to proceed. With a huge gap between the rich and the poor, democracy becomes a closed door in which the wealthy have the key. The 15 activists won't yield into submission and they want the people to join their mission to steer Angola to a better direction, calling for better leadership and administration. I'm Jay Santino, reporting for Newsbeat. Thank you, Jay Santino, for that report. Many art forms take bath in the streets, especially dances. Many stem from ghetto beats, capoeira, tango, and of course break dancing. When money is low and crime is not an option, you get high and down lows, twist, freeze, and move to the fashion. In Uganda too, among the city youth, breakers and their crews know all the power moves. One event stands out by its reputation. It's the breakfast jump, a yearly big boy and big girl celebration. Next Saturday and Sunday, join them in one day at the YMCA from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the 21st and 22nd of November. The final event will be a show to remember, featuring top international acts including Crazy Legs, the founder of Rocksteady Crew, and the Star Yuji documentary Bouncing Cats. Just to mention a few, there will be DJ Snap from Zulu Nation and the best breakers from the region, including the feared Congolese dancers, famous for their style and particular swag. Follow the bread beats and witness the power of the streets. Breakfast Jump finally brings the heat. Check out their info on Facebook. See you there next week. 
that was the news of the beat. Next week will be another hit, Still Ladies Like and Survivor. Reporting live and direct with love and respect. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Follow the beat. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Follow the beat. Follow the beat.